<laughs> Welcome to our world. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Unearthing the Supernaturals, Meeting of Warriors. <laughs> Take a seat around the fire and join Hero, Sean Clan, and Pattaya as we take a look into the charcoal and discuss matters of worlds that parallel our own. It is these worlds that have their own laws, their own legends and tales. What you're about to hear is legends and tales and lessons from warriors who have lived this way of life their entire lives. Armed with teachings that have been passed down from generation to generation, these teachings go beyond race and boundaries. They are teachings about the natural laws and how to interact with beings of the other side. Respect these teachings, or else we'll come looking for you. And welcome, everyone, to another episode of Unearthing the Supernaturals, Meeting of Warriors. Hey! Uh, hey! Uh. Oh, ho, oh, ho, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho. It's been a while, everybody. So this one right here is going to be a very, very special, heartwarming one because these two right here, Jay Marie Yates, are our family. Yeah, I love these guys so much, and it's so happy to get in touch with them again and just share some of the love and share some of the laughs and stories that we all have with each other so yeah jay marie yates everybody Woohoo! Woo <laughs> world famous <laughs> jay marie yates yeah go guys go ahead and introduce yourself uh my name's jay Dude, <laughs> um uh jay and marie yates uh we, we've been around uh and doing this in the field for a while i mean i guess like i've pretty much been uh cursed or blessed since birth um with the supernatural <laughs> um and then she kind of inherently got this through marriage um, and uh, we've been together now for since 2003 doing this, really. So he it's got been the, a long run. You got the dates right. Good job. <laughs> hey, that's what it's all about, right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. So, yeah, everybody. So, we met Jay Marie Yates. God, was it like almost a year and a half ago? Almost two years now, I would say. Something like that. Yeah. I still remember the phone call when Jay actually met you guys. He goes, if I do not come home alive, these guys are huge. <laughs> I was like, he was like, I don't think you guys were coming so, in. Older. You, yeah, so we'll give some context on how we, we met Jay and everything. Is um, This was back when we first started ghost hunting and everything. And uh, we reached out to Vulture City. And at the time, that's when uh, Jay and Marie were looking over the overnight investigations. And so we emailed Vulture City, we got in contact with him, and this is before when uh, Vulture City used to do the overnight investigations. And um, we ended up meeting Jay over there at Vulture City, and I believe, I think that was like the first time Jay's ever seen anybody like gear up like that, like for an investigation, like how we do and everything. So like, I remember Jay gave us a, a little walk around the town, and it was like, okay, yeah, we'll go ahead and get ready. So then we go get ready, but like we got ready. Like that that was back when we used to get like fully full armor, armor, full everything. Yeah, everything. <laughs> and then so all of our traditional armor and weapons and everything. And I just remember going up to Jay's ride, knocking on his window. I was like, hey, hey, Jay, we're going to go ahead and get started. And I just remember seeing Jay's face like, oh, okay, <laughs> all right. <then." laughs> oh, man. Well, that, it was it was funny though when you guys told us later on, like after we became really good friends and everything, that like that was the first thing that came to your mind. It was just like, dang, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know what to do if I I. I remember that. It, 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 I was not expecting that. I will just say I was. Uh, I mean, you guys are obviously very tall dudes, like every one of you, and then you guys had swords strapped on and everything, and. I was like, whoa. And then we started having a conversation, and David started speaking in Navajo to a spirit, like, behind me. And I was like, what the hell is going on right now? <laughs> like, I didn't know what to think. And, uh, yeah, I was just like, you know, I mean, obviously things worked out really well, but, I mean, it was definitely, uh, it was different. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was like, what are you talking about, Jake? Is like, oh, my God. They're like, I think you said four or five. I don't remember how many it was. I think it was like four of you guys. He was like, they're all so, yeah. tall and something like that. Yeah. 
that, that, that was funny because like I remember going through that whole investigation and like it, it just felt like we immediately clicked you know we were both very interested in each other's history and all of our experiences that we had I remember we were talking like the investigation ended and we talked for like another hour or two just like just explaining everything that we've all experienced who we are what we do and everything is and it, right. I, I think that translated to even afterwards you know like we would even like when we do like overnight investigations in Vulture City or we do like events over there, we just sit by the fire till like three or four o'clock in the morning just talking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I always I woke up hagging because we'd sit right next to the fire because it was chilly out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Those remember those times where we're like, <laughs> all dry mouth and everything from that. <laughs> yeah. So, Definitely. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about like your guys' journey in the paranormal world and everything from the how you guys started and everything like that. Well, I used to have all my sunshine and unicorns and all that. And then he brought me to the dark side. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, like, I, I guess <clears throat> it would start, it would start with me um, as, as a kid, you know, I, I experienced stuff that I, I couldn't quite explain. Right. We didn't have these TV shows that we have today. We didn't have the, the literature that we have today, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and it wasn't, like, very popular, right? So yeah. <clears throat> when I was going through it, it was really difficult. I, I felt really isolated and alone. And what I saw as a kid, I would see children specifically would come to visit me, and they would appear to me the way that they looked upon their moments of death, whether that was by fire, drowning, you know, like, car accident, like, whatever. I would see them for what they looked like at their moments before or at death. Mm -hmm. um, so as a little kid, and I'm talking back to like four years old, you know, and seeing that stuff, it, it, it was it was quite scary. I mean, it would be scary even today at a 40 year old Jay looking at this stuff. He'd be kind of terrifying and intimidating. Um, but I really didn't understand it. So at a young age, I thought what I was seeing was was like kids that were kind of intruding into my house, like just like, oh, you weren't invited here. But like, do you want to play? You know, so I have a lot of childhood memories, ironically, of people that I would play with, like, you know, like I thought were neighborhood kids that were definitely kids, maybe neighborhood kids, but they weren't really living. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, that translated to a lot of me being um, so the really terrible nights. I can tell you that because some of these things became really like in your face and personal because if it got really scary and it was at nighttime, I was seeing these things. Um, it was difficult, right? Cause you're alone, you're isolated, you're by yourself. It's dark, you yeah. know, your family's sleeping. You don't want to go wake your parents up and <laughs> for the hundredth time that week saying that you're seeing things in your room. Yeah. So I would create like these forts, like in my bed, right? Like with like blankets and all my toys and stuff. Um, and I would like try to read like comic books. I went through a lot of D batteries with those old flashlights and stuff. Cause I'd oh, carry yeah. that next to my bed. Um, but the problem is it, the more I ignored them, the more in my face they became. So it, it, it was very like misunderstood by me. Mm -hmm. So I would also see um, as a very young kid, um, a very dark, shadowy figure that it, depending on, you know, my time of life, I would say between seven foot to nine foot tall. This thing stood. It was mm -hmm. cloaked. Whoa. It was large, very masculine, and that would kind of he would kind of be the puppet master to these individuals that would come and visit me. Mm -hmm. um, so it was it was quite terrifying. So pretty much from the age of five all the way up to the age of fourteen, um, I was tested at least once a year to make sure I wasn't crazy. My parents, you know, would make sure that I had my IEPs and You're stuff crazy. right. Like, what's going on with this <laughs> kid? You know, like he talks about all these things. So what the doctors and what everyone came up with in their synopsis was is. Uh, he's either seeing these things or he believes he's seeing these things. Either way, they're very real to him. Yeah. He, I was never diagnosed with anything. And then later on, when I got into law enforcement, that was in my early twenties, I was psychologically evaluated. I passed all that. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> but I mean, uh, but like I said, like it, it was always like, it, it was a question for me, especially in my adolescent years as I, I approached like, you know, teenage years, it was like, I kind of wondered like, am I going crazy? And I, when I started realizing other people weren't seeing these things, um, it, it made me feel really isolated. So like kids were reading like, you know, where's Waldo books and stuff and uh, cat in the hat and just real basic, silly like books. I was like researching cryptozoology and, and mummies and curses. And, and, I, was, and I was reading a little house on the prairie. <laughs> yes, so, <laughs> but I mean like with all that, like um, it, and it kind of came to full head and fruition um, on August uh, in August of 99 when I had a death experience and uh I believe that I saw both heaven and hell. 
and I was given an opportunity to come back here. So I made a promise with my creator that if you give me the people, I will speak to them. If you give me the audience, I will speak to them. Mm -hmm. So every opportunity that I've had, you know, ever since, you know, I was 17 years old all the way up to my age now, um, I always make sure that those opportunities with those audiences being out there, that it's, it's paying respect to my creator that allowed me a second shot to come back here to earth and essentially talk to the people about this place existing, that there is another side to this. Uh -huh. But um, mm -hmm. I got involved in the church. Um, I got excommunicated from the church because I believed in ghosts, demons, and angels, which seems kind of silly. But uh, and this is a non-denominational church. Shortly thereafter, I met Marie. And I completely screwed up her life. <laughs> so Marie, like, how did your story come about? <laughs> well, like I said, uh, I grew up in church. Um, very big time uh, Baptist This family. is what's weird. I grew up in church, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, my church was like, we were there Saturday, what, Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night. Wednesdays, and then there was a day during the week that people washed people's feet. I mean, it was just the yeah, we didn't it was, do all yeah, that. it was the, it was, and then I went to everything. I went to vacation Bible school. We did all that kind of stuff. So I was I was very involved. My parents were very involved in church. Um, I will say I, I had a very good childhood. I'm not even going to say I had two amazing parents. Sadly, I lost my dad by selling my mom. So. But, I mean, to be honest with you, I didn't know any kind of ghost stuff at all. Um, the only ghost I knew was Casper the Friendly Ghost on TV. Like, I mean, that's why. I, but I, she says this, though. But to this day, like, some of the places that she used to go and play at are, like, the Haunted Cemetery, the, the Haunted Park in Indiana, the, the bridge <laughs> that was supposedly haunted. The she old was always drawn to it then, huh? Oh. Like, you know. It's really weird. It's now seeing everybody because I know, like, so many people in the paranormal field. And all the places that people are, like, because I, I grew up in Indiana. Yeah. So I know quite a few of the paranormal investigators up there, and they're all investigating the location that I used to hang out with. Oh, I mean, it was like, and I'm like, wait, that was haunted? Oh, See, my gosh. So it was calling her all along. <laughs> I just kind of just helped ignite that spark. And another yeah. thing, my mom would tell me not to go into, like, abandoned buildings or woods and all that. Well, if my mom told me not to do it, I did it. Marie, they're going to fight. Um, sorry, no. our animals are fighting. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Um, but, <laughs> fight, fight. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, I, I, I always did whatever my mom told me not to do. So I was a very, went into all this stuff. I was very adventurous. I yeah. always wanted to do everything. Oh, I won't do it. I'm scared of it. I did it. So, but when I met Jay, it was, it was different. I will tell you when we start talking. Um, I thought he was much older than he was. <laughs> he had <acts> so mature. <laughs> I did. I thought he was much older. Um, I came in with children. So, um, and you were much older. <laughs> I don't look <laughs> on you older. Um, but um, I am older than him. So, but it, it, I had an autistic son as well in, our previous, um, in my mar previous marriage. And I, um, Jay and him bonded. So um, like so close, like right away. Yeah. And I think a lot of it had to do with Stephen always sees things and he talked to things. Our, our cats and are stuff trying to like speak that. to you. <laughs> oh, yes. Um so and I just assume it was because he was autistic, he had, you know, mental illness. I didn't think anything else more of it. When Jay came along and was around the house a lot more, he seen exactly what Stephen was seeing. So those two bonded. And I honestly will tell you, I got jealous. I mean, because it was me and my boys for so for a while. And I was like, wait a sec, that's my son. <laughs> what are you doing? So I sort of wanted to learn a little bit more about the paranormal. Plus, what she's leaving out here is, is that the house that she was living in in Arizona um, had a very dark secret. And it was kind of hidden away from her upon her leasing agreement that she had with this particular place um, where there was actually a double homicide. Um, where uh, a man um, ended up murdering his son and then killing himself. Um, so with that being said, like uh, my, my son was seeing these things. I was seeing this. I knew nothing about the story of the location. Mm -hmm. But when we finally got rid of like the keys and we were like, I bought our first house. Um, oh, my gosh. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. We got ghosts. Well, now the ghosts are talking. Yeah, they don't want you to tell that story. <laughs> Please go lay down, girl. Go, go. Sorry for pitbull. 
She <laughs> won't stop. So the real back, real quick. I had a <laughs> She's very obsessed with Jay. Um, but uh, <laughs> like, like literally, like my son was talking to some kid named Nicholas. I had seen Nicholas. Um, he was talking to a man named Snake. And it turns out, upon you turning in the keys, we kind of heard all this information. We had heard chatter about it from neighbors. Um, but uh, essentially, this guy's street name was Snake. His moniker was out in the street was Snake. Um, and the son was Nicholas. Uh, so it's yeah. kind of a tragic story that had happened. And uh, my kid was picking up on it. Well, you know, essentially. My kid I still remember when me dropping off the keys after we were leaving. She's like, I didn't, can't believe you stayed there that long with those boys. And she goes, because of that murder suicide. And I'm like, huh? Whoa. <laughs> like, oh, I just sat there like, oh, why didn't you tell me that when we first because moved Because you in? probably wouldn't have moved No, in. I probably wouldn't have moved <laughs> <in>. so, But... <laughs> But uh, that, that was definitely, uh, that was a big contributor uh, to that. But when we first, uh, we, at our first house that we lived in together, um, I was about ready to propose to her and I set up a, a date night. I had no idea. And uh, I really wanted like full disclosure, like, hey, you know, like I've been haunted, like I'm a survivor, like from these things that I've gone through my entire life. And inherently through marriage, you are going to be a part of this. And I wanted to like in full disclosure and transparency, like just kind of get it all out there. And lo and behold, that night she had her first paranormal experience and everything went all to hell from there and it hasn't stopped. I almost <laughs> ran. I will say I was well, like- she it's... did run because you ran away from the house because you yeah, saw Yeah, almost her. like, oh, uh-huh. Jay, 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 Jay was like, all right, Marie, sign right here for the contract yes, and yes. everything. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, it was so, a, it, it's different. I will say being with him. Yeah. <laughs> so real back on when you, uh, when you kind of had your experience, Jay, and you said you saw heaven and hell, I have uh-huh. a real important question for you. Sure. Was Marie in your heaven? <laughs> it, it's really funny. And we don't really talk about this much when we have this conversation, but, uh, there was, it, it was very interesting. Is it really funny? You're the first one to ever bring this up. So, uh, there was actually, I was shown when my life had flashed before my eyes, essentially, and I was shown what was to come and what I was missing out on and what things I could have done and choices I made that were incorrect. Um, I was shown things of the future and there was, there was two weddings. There was two chapels. One was completely empty and nobody showed up and I was standing there by myself. <clears throat> the second one was full, filled with people. And I was shown this woman. And I had never seen this woman until I actually met my wife, Marie. Um, And that was the woman that I was shown uh, so early on. And it was really difficult because when I had my near-death experience, I was with my high school sweetheart at the time. And I remember like explaining to her my death experience. And I was really upset about it. And I was telling her, "I I just want you to know that you're not part of my future. I don't know how to tell you this, but you're not part of my future. Um, Who I saw is not you nor will it ever be you, you know? Mm-hmm. And that was really difficult for that particular person. Um, uh, and uh, it was kind of difficult for me at the time because I was like, well, who is this person? When is this person going to come around? Like, yeah. you know, yeah. um, but uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and it was her. And, uh, and and I knew that pretty early on. I wouldn't say it was like the first date, the first time I saw her. No, we but, argued the very but first I remember, time. But <laughs> like, I remember finally sitting there and, and contemplating everything. And going back upon my life and like, why does this person, why is this face standing out to me so much? And I immediately recalled, oh my God, there's no way. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, so that's definitely, I, so, I, I mean, I definitely know I'm, I'm on the right path, kind of-ish. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, well, yeah. after almost 20 years, it better be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, that's, oh. A, that's a true blessing right there, you know, to be able to yeah. see that and everything. And, you know, I love you two's interaction with each other, your guys' energy you have with each other. And it's just like, every time I always see you guys, you know, crack jokes at each other and everything like that, I just always <laughs> laugh. It makes my day. It's just like, goals. That's always, people think we just do it in front of people. We do it all day. It's us. <laughs> all day. And just, all day. It, just watch you guys And usually interact. I'm the one messing with him. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> but I will tell you, the fight that started when we first met, it was him. He thought he could try to control women. Well, yeah, no, you did. Very yeah, you did. Very yeah, specifically, uh-huh. said, any future wife of mine, well, mine won't be going out to clubs. They will be doing this. They will be doing that. And that's how it's going to happen. That's exactly what you did anyway. So. No, I, <laughs> no, I'm not. I went to clubs and I do what I want to do. 
<laughs> but you don't do any of that. Though. Well, I don't go to clubs now. Sorry, I'm too old. For and you never went without me anyway. I went to a club without you. When? When I went to Vegas with my sister. Oh, yeah. When you called me 400 times and you yeah. said you missed me? <laughs> <laughs> Wish you were here. <laughs> yeah, my sister says she'll never go to Vegas with me ever alone without him. She goes, oh, right stop and try to call. I, uh, I will say, he is my best friend. He yeah. He's my worst enemy. And my best friend, but I honestly, I a lot of people is like, well, why don't you hang out with your girlfriends? Do this. Once well, in a great mood, but honestly, I'd rather him come along with me. Yeah, our than, fights are pretty. Dude, we, yeah. had, we had a fight earlier when we were out like running errands, kind of where it was like, I need my space. Like, get away from me. And like, she like really went away, and I was freaking out. I didn't know where <laughs> Like, you stupid, you told me to get <laughs> yeah. I didn't really mean that. I just meant it for like 30 seconds. Like, I was just kidding. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, That's really so awesome. So, Marie, um, when you first met Jay, what was his energy like? Like, I know you, you said that he kind of introduced the paranormal to you. But thinking back at it, what was, like, his energy like when, like, you first saw him and when you're meeting each other and then, did you kind of feel like a spiritual connection, kind of like how he says he didn't know it at the time, but he saw you in his vision? Did you kind of feel yourself eventually going to be together? Well, I have to go to the second time I saw met him. The first time I was really drunk, and I really don't really remember. So I remember just him coming into the house, and my cousin invited him, and I was cleaning my house, so I was not dressed. I had my hair up. I didn't. I and I don't really wear listen, makeup. dude. I tried to leave the house at like two <laughs> o'clock in the morning or something, one o'clock in the morning, and all of a sudden I hear someone screaming in the house, and she's like, "Bring back the good preacher, Christian man! Bring back the Christian man!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she chased me down in the parking lot, and uh, and you, you gotta remember though, like when I first met her, I was really lost, dude. Like I, I, I literally, I, I was ordained, and I was really trying to get like this spot. In this and you church. were drinking a lot. And I really did. I was, <laughs> like, and I was kind of disappointed well, how much one. I fell off, right? <laughs> and I was like, you know, and, and and I was like, okay, like well, it's time to. Go. I remember him picking up our youngest son, my Brandon, and I remember, and and I was just like, oh. And then I just, I don't know. I don't really remember much about that night, except you I do remember him preaching, like praying over me and my kids. Well, and no, no, just, real, realistically, uh, and I think like that's kind of what sealed a deal between her and I um, was that she came out to stop me in a really weird way. And I was kind of disappointed in where I was at, where I was at, you know, I was just like, I'm not, not necessarily with her, but with my own self. Yeah. And uh, like, uh, I, I we literally prayed together about our lives because she was going through a lot. She was she had just gotten out of the I divorce. I just got out of divorce, and yeah. I was it was domestic violence. Mm-hmm. And like so. I, I mean, I prayed, um, I prayed over her. Um, I ended up re-entering the house, um, did a full blessing of the home, and uh, her youngest, Brandon, who you guys know very well, mm-hmm. at the time was what a little over a year old, yeah. almost two, I think. Yeah, yeah. almost two. Um, and he kept reaching up for me, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I really don't want to pick this kid up. I'm like a stranger coming into this house. But there was something inside me that really was pulling to do that. And, and when I picked him up, there was such comfort and peace where it was like, this is supposed to happen. And a lot of the reasons why in the beginning of our relationship, I didn't spend a lot of time. I, I could only spend a short amount of time there to leave because it was almost scary because it was like, why is this working so well? Why is this mm-hmm. happening? Why do you know? And I really want to be careful because there was kids involved, right? And she yeah. was already, you know, in a bad relationship. I was just getting out of a bad relationship. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, definitely we, we sowed very deep roots early on. His with, energy, with I will honestly, what I always tell people is it's mostly like the second, several times later, me, I mean, you know, his cousin, my cousin, his best friend really did force us together i don't know for um, how many months and we were like no and we're not ready we're not off, ready yeah. and we kept both of us kept blowing off we weren't ready mm-hmm. and then he sort of did it on his own without us both knowing um and i'm glad he did because i will say like he honestly i have was in a really bad relationship um it was so bad that i was even i was beaten so bad i was almost i was in a coma mm-hmm. so Jeez. i mean it, it was not a good relationship at all. So I know what bad is. 
And when I actually, when Jay would talk to me, it, it, it was, it was like a relief because mm -hmm. I felt his honesty yeah. and you could see his honesty mm -hmm. in his eyes. And it was just like, I've never seen that before unless it was through my dad. Yeah. So I, I did, I, I felt really close to him. Like, Oh my gosh, what did I just find? And I always tell people and everybody's like, how did you get, I mean, he's like, there's no good guys out there. I'm like, there are, you, you just, they're very few, <laughs> I say, but they're out there. I mean, it really is. I mean, minus one, cause I got mine, <laughs> but, oh, yes. I, but I will say his honesty is what pulled uh, um, off of him. And I always said that people like, how did you believe all its stories? When he said, if you ever get to sit down and talk to Jay, you just know he's speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it pours off of his face and eyes and everything when he's talking. And that that really that really impressed me because you don't really get to see that much in humans anymore. And I think that's why, like, our, our trust for you guys really was really quick. Uh, honestly, it was, like, almost like the first night we met you because we get this from our dad. We know how to pick up bullshit from people from a yep. mile away. <laughs> so, you know, like we, we talk with Jay and then later on we met you, Marie, and it's just, honestly, it, we could trust you guys. We, we know that you guys are, your hearts are sincere, your words are true. And you know, that's, that's very, very hard to find. And just like how you guys said, it's hard to find that in the industry. And us being in here for only two years now, we've kind of really come to see that, you know, come to fruition, <laughs> meeting people. We're just like, oh, oh yeah, 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 okay, hi, and then never talk to them ever again. You know, I tried to warn you. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, first, every time we meet those people, I always hear you two. It's just like, there's some weirdos out there. Be careful. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah yep, yep. You hear the advice of Jay Marie all the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wise teaching from Jay Marie Yates. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I should do an audio thing of how to actually expect things when you're coming into the paranormal community. Yeah, that's <laughs> a great idea, actually. It's, it's very needed, I think. Be, be, be J. Marie Yates 101 book. Paranormal 101 yeah. book. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you guys got together and your guys' relationship started to grow and I'm sure with the little ones growing up too, them, how you said they were able to see things, how did that translate over into your guys' like... Um, your your television shows and everything like that how did, how did that go about well like tv was like never like on the table like that was never like an expectation for us like that literally wasn't even like a thing we thought was even possible i guess you could say like that wasn't even like on our radar at all so like when we first started doing this um you got to go back to like earlier on like together we went through a very seriously demonic uh demonic haunting in our own home um, and it lasted for a long time. And I'm not going to ever say that it's completely gone because it's always kind of there, right? Yeah. And it only takes that. It on him. It's just that it's little always. mistake. It's that, it's that one little mistake that you make that kind of lets it bleed right back through. Um, but we kind of went through a very serious time of a, a, a very demonic haunting that affected our entire family. Mm -hmm. And this was before we were like hardcore serious, like helping families and doing big businesses. This is back when we would visit like haunted hotspots like Jerome tombstone. And we would just like do the tours and then go out on our own and do our thing. Right. Yeah. Um, but we weren't like official, you know? Um, and, uh, we, we called upon the paranormal community and the clergy and they both rejected us and, and multiple like groups that we reached out to, including like members of the clergy. And they were saying all that it was all too dangerous for them to come out to help us. Mm -hmm. And, um, back then that really pissed me off and really bothered me. Um, and even clergy were like, "Where well, you're not part of our church. And this is at great risk us coming out here to do anything. We have families ourselves. And I was really mad about it um, and really upset. So we kind of handled the matters ourselves, like our own way, trusting in our own faith um, and our own intuitions. And, and we kind of fought in each other and, and we fought it. We fought mm -hmm. it together as a family. I and I will never say that it's ever gone because it's not. It's there. That's why we're haunted survivors today. I mean, we still are. It doesn't change. Mm. But we kind of made a vow to go out and to help families that were struggling like with the supernatural, we would be the ones that would say yes when everyone said no. And that led us down a very dark path for many, many years, taking only the most serious cases um, in, in, in Arizona. And uh, it brought with us a very serious demonic haunting, even worse than the one we dealt with first off. Um, and uh, it led to, um, 
I believe now Marie having a lot of the autoimmune system disorders and things that she has that the doctors they don't know what's wrong with her, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because, uh, you know, there, there's darkness out there, man, and then there's, there's true darkness, right? I mean, I always say that uh, there's a darkness out there that Crayola hasn't put their finger on, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a darkness that breathes both life and death um, all in the same site and just viewing what it is. And we went through some of the darkest, most disgusting and vile demonic haunting. Um, I mean, there was as we were helping, as we were helping a family, yeah. which essentially it latched on to us with what we already had. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm talking about like bird cages getting thrown across our room and things oh, getting turn, crosses turned upside down. Blood spots. Blood spots and no one on being the floor. Cut or any... I'm talking about uh, Marie becoming possessed. I'm talking about you coming possessed. Just a lot of things um, that happened to the point to where like um, it was really dangerous for our health. We did very earlier on a documentary. It's called Trials and Tribulations of the Demonic. It's really, it's really like, it's rough. We had a great production company with us um, putting it together. Um, it's out there somewhere. You could probably see it. But uh, that's when we were going through the worst of the worst. And there's an interview that they do with us in the house. And they say, well, what's next? And you look at Marie and she looks like she's about ready to die. Um, her hair is thinned out. Her face is sunk in. You see me, I have blackness under my eyes. I just Jeez. look sad. I look much older than I look now, to be honest yeah. with you. Mm-hmm. Um, minus my facial hair, you know, but I mean, I look really terrible. And I remember <clears throat> in that scene, like, you know, we were talking like so openly and so honestly. And uh, they asked us, they said, uh, so, so what's next, you know? And we were like, we're going to continue to fight this. And they said, well, what if it brings you down this road? And we were just like, well, then that's what happens. That's what we were supposed to well, do. Well, we, have, we have each other. I mean, we have we have our faith in God, and then we have each other. I know Jay just showed me a, it's a weird a TikTok video, and it's truly about about Jay and I. It shows like some guy coming down and shooting like lightning uh, and thunder. It was, a, it was a Satan figure that was trying to yeah. come down and you know kill. And he the man pushed the woman back. To mm-hmm. like, you know, get her away, but the woman jumped back up, and then we fought it off together. And that, and Jay mm-hmm. shared that to me because that is that is us. I mean, no matter what, we each other have each other's back, and that's the one thing I could say. I mean, no matter what, anything in my life, I mean, Jay's always had my back, even if he didn't agree with it. And there's been a very few times where he hasn't, but he's always had my back. There's been some dark moments, man. Like we. Um... We've, we've seen some stuff, man. We've seen things that I just never thought that you, you should see. Or I, 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 I will know. honestly say, and I really don't think I've really announced this to much, to only a few people. Um, but I've actually, I'm completely taking a step back in the paranormal. I, I'm not doing no more TV, period. I won't. Jay will. Um, I'm not. Um, I probably will not really investigate much that. I mean, I'll go investigate some places. We're here now in Tennessee, and I would love to experience some stuff, but nothing, like, serious. I'm really sick, mm-hmm. and it's not very good. I mean, I it just, everything is just, it's different for me. So, and I know yeah. I'm not going to blame it all on the paranormal at all, but, I mean, I think I, a lot I will, of though. I will absolutely, does. and I want to I want to interrupt there, because I think it's important to be said, especially amongst family, is that we get into this field. I was kind of born into it. I didn't ask for this. I I never once said, oh, I want to be a paranormal investigator. I didn't even know what that was. Like, but we as investigators, we constantly go out. Um, Whether you're a ghost hunter enthusiast, it doesn't matter. You go out, you investigate these locations. You have no idea what the side effect is from that, that EMF that we're dealing with. Just that alone. Not to mention, what is the side effect of being in some of these older historical buildings? What's the side effect? with our respiratory system. We already know what that is with some of the places that we enter in. What's the side effect um, with making contact with spirits? We don't really know, right? But I can tell you that I have seen a huge deterioration of Marie's health. And and I'm telling you, we fought some serious fights, man. I mean, fights that, you know, like, you no one would believe if they even heard them, you know? And Mm -hmm. and I I truly believe that um, we're just unaware of what the paranormal side effects are in this field. And I think it's not talked about much. And it's one thing guys just going out there just that are just filming for YouTube and they're trying to get views. But for people like us, like us, you guys that are going out there and intentionally trying to make a difference, right? And to really do something with the value 
not not monetary, not like money, not like fame, but to do something, um, it, it 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 takes a toll on us, and you have mm. to be careful. And, and it's it, it's a very dangerous road that we travel. I'm I'm still gonna be doing like the events and stuff mm. like that, um, but I'm gonna be on the back burner of a lot of the other stuff. I just health wise, I can't do it anymore i've got to put myself and my health first now Mm -hmm. Um, with our children i will say brandon is now up there in age he's very excited and eager to do paranormal um so i will tell you you probably will hear more about brandon doing stuff with jay and you know my dad is very reluctant to take him into some of the places that i've been into so it's kind of like i think you reach um a supernatural maturity at some point. And, and John Zappas and I, and we've all talked yeah. about this, where you hit a point where you're like, yeah, I can go in and do a full-blown investigation. Or I can sit down and have a 30-minute conversation with this person and completely change their life at times, right? Mm-hmm. Because oh, yeah. a lot of this is perception. It's all about like how we deal with things mentally, how we departmentalize hauntings, and, and how we deal with it internally. So I really, truly think that... like. Um, we, as investigators, we've kind of, you know, we're kind of that guy and girl that you call. Um, we have a conversation with you. Um, and, and sometimes that investigation isn't necessary, right? I mean, what, what's the point of going in and ruffling more feathers than already have been done? But to yeah. give you some education on how to deal with that. Because in my experience, yeah, yeah, you can banish things from a house. But you can so easily reinvite that back in by mistake. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so to really educate people on, on what to do and how they should do it, um, that's more valuable to me. And, and I and I get more out of that. And I feel like the clients that we serve get more out of that, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely. And it's true with uh, like a lot of the traditional Native American teachings. That's why you don't see a whole lot of Native Americans in the field of the paranormal is because of all the, the the negative side effects that are there that are kind of understood throughout time and kind of Native Americans interacting with spirits. And some people who don't know how to interact, they get more of those side effects. Um, but then you guys, ha- like you guys are professionals, have been in there and have dealt with the darkest of the dark. That kind of goes into like knowing what you're doing and then that knows with giving respect to the spirits but the elders, how they say, be very careful when you're interacting with spirit. Be very careful when you're interacting with beings of the other side, because we are still human. We still have a certain energy. We still have a certain um, kind of presence about us that can get afflicted by things uh, of that nature. So what you guys have said is amazing. Um, you're right on the point where just be careful of those who are in the paranormal field of interacting. And we kind of all know and understand that that, that struggle of we know that there is going to be some sort of side effects. We know there is going to be something. I mean, with us, even me being a medicinal person in all our songs and ceremonies, I know that I'm going to need ceremony. We know that we're going to need help down the line from the side effects because they are very powerful beings, very powerful um, spirits, and just the interactions, there, there comes a price almost. Yeah, yeah, there is. There is a price. Yeah. And uh, go, going with what Marie said too, there is never anything wrong with taking a step back when you are dealing with stuff mm-hmm. physically too. We saw that with our friend Jason, Jason Crossan, who is Pattaya, who is a member of our group. He dealt with uh, diabetes and and a lot of our investigations that we saw, they took advantage of his sickness inside of his body to weaken him. And yes. it, it, it took him a long time, weeks after investigations to kind of recuperate and, you know, rest in peace now, you know, for everything that he's done. But it, it is a real thing. It does affect the human body in that way. And that's why we always say, like, when you go on, like, an investigation, you have spiritual hangover. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. you, 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 you feel that for a couple of days because you were strongly interacting with a different world that your human body really isn't used to or to take on so much all at once. And then you have to rest and you just feel, you know, sluggish and dehydrated and everything, you know, that goes with it. So, see, so that's why like, I like, I love you guys so much because you guys understand <laughs> that, you know, and it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's really awesome because you see that in other people sometimes that. You know, they they say that they do this stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, I go and fight demons. Oh, yeah, I deal with all this and that. But you look into their eyes, and you can tell if they've actually been through it or not. 
you know, yes. I, we could tell that you guys have been through it, and it's, you know, you, you just tell those people, just like, well, just be careful out there. There's more out there that you have yet to experience, and that's one thing the elders always told us is like, and that's one thing my brother told me too, that he was told when he first started this, life expectancy to be doing this stuff is very, very low. You have to understand that when you deal with these darker things because they have the that power to take you away that way, that easily. So that's why like I wanted to kind of do this because I wanted to talk to the OGs of the paranormal. You guys were there during the very beginning before it was even a, a trend, before you know all these ghost shows came out and everything. You guys were in the trenches fighting those things off. And like I said, it wasn't for TV. It was for, you know, to help people and that's why we love you guys too because we're on that same path as well just a different perspective with our native american side of it right there i give you guys so much respect with what you guys i've we've had so many conversations with you guys being you know with the navajo and everything and i know what a lot of them think of it with you guys and you guys still go out there but you try to do it for them and that's Jay and I. I mean, I mean, like, and that's the same thing we get yeah. from our Christian faith, right? We got people that are in that faith that are like, and we understand each other through that. I think that's where we kind of connected so well is that I guess our tribe is that of the Christian faith, if you really want to say that. And, and in the Christian faith, yeah, they, they acknowledge this and they, they, they respect people trying to help out a bit, but they, they frown upon this. Right. And, and to really do and to bring it in. the, in the this day, in I still want to like, go to a church. I mean, I just when someone says church, I think bad. It, it's it's sad because I grew up in one. But to be honest with you, the some of the stuff that I remember going through in that church was not good. I mm -hmm. mean, I shouldn't have been treated the way I was because yeah. I tried to do but different well, things. I don't think church uh, defines faith. Right. No. You know, and, and I think our faith think is far person. greater than four walls in a row. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Definitely. I think you can. I think you can have your own church, like anywhere. I like. There's this country song mm -hmm. out there called "My Church," and it's talking about sitting in your car listening to music. I always tell Jay that is like sort of my my song about because that's how I do. I yeah. I could sit there and Jay does knows I'll listen to music and that's how I relax. It's a good mm -hmm. form of meditation. And, yeah, right? it, and I that's how I worship my God is like through music, and it's just like I don't have to go sit in a church and give my money to somebody for them to pay their mortgage. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. The creator and God, he's everywhere. He's listening everywhere. It doesn't matter if you're between a certain set of four walls or if you're out in nature, wherever you are, he's there. Yeah. And that's what I mean. It, I think everything, another thing Jay and I have learned through so much of this is the difference of everybody's culture, beliefs, um, look of life, everything. I mean, at first, I will say we were co cookie cutters when we first started this out. We really were. We're Christians. We're going out there. We're fighting, you know, the bad. <laughs> I mean, but then I remember the first time we got one to somebody that was a uh, worship the devil. They were devil worshipers. And we're like sitting here like, uh, duh, you know why you're getting it. But it's, <laughs> but it's not true. I mean, after we, you know, you learn all these different things. <laughs> it's, it's trial by fire. Yeah, it's <laughs> trial. I mean, it, 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 you do. Fire. And we're never, I mean, obviously we try to collect data and evidence, but I, I remember like um, we had a pretty serious case and we had all this great evidence, right? We're like, yes, we caught this and we caught that. And, yeah. and then the family's like, okay, cool. Well, now what? You know? And we're like, oh shit, you know? <laughs> so like, I mean, we really now strive what? to be like the now what? And sometimes the now what doesn't really mean like going out and investigating your home. No. It means providing you with uh, some time to sit down and actually have a conversation. Go out about, to Starbucks and just, you I know, mean, talking to somebody, I mean, explaining it's that education. Stuff. So, I mean, that whole paranormal consultant title that's kind of been held to us for a while now um, is kind of more of what we do. Um, and we, and mm -hmm. that's all facets of the paranormal. So we got production companies calling us all the time about like, Hey, like, what about this place? Or who do you know this, this? And then, you know, it's, or are people that are trying to put on conferences, you know, I get called for. I mean, and, and we've, we've been fortunate to be around a lot of that, and we don't mind helping people out. Um, and uh, it's been fun, though. I mean, it is. I, I will say we've had a wonderful life together. I, I will say, like, every, my mom and them, like, you seriously going to retire? And she's not going to do it anymore. It's like, I honestly just don't want to do TV anymore. I, I, I'm just, I'm done. Um, 
if you're not, if you have not done it and you, it's a drench, you guys are at the beginning of it. It's the drenches and you, you guys will be able to go and you guys are younger. I'm older and now my illness is just like, I've noticed when I keep pushing everything, I'm just, I'm exhausted and, and it's and, a lot. And here's but the problem that fun. we've always had with television is we were never good at being dishonest. That's just not in our genetic makeup. So yeah. we won't do it. And a lot of people know that about us that mm -hmm. have worked with us. And, you know, these people are more than welcome to, you know, pipe in and say something about this uh, in this video. Like, <laughs> they know damn well that we're not going to go. I, I can tell you that earlier on, I remember sitting in a green room on a particular TV show. <laughs> and I remember go, it was like one of our first things. And I remember the, the production saying, oh, my God, she sounds so great. She's doing such a good job. Oh, my God, what is she doing? She's leaving. And I'm like, what the hell is happening? So I walk out and Marie had unmiked herself and said, no, I'm not lying. I've worked too hard in this industry to lie and say something that's not true. So it's not yeah. going to happen, you know? And oh, uh, no. they had to like talk her into staying and, you know, and, and, it, and the show went the way it went. I think, whatever. I mean, eventually, I mean, we've, we've known, I know so many producers and directors and they all, all of them, I love them all. They all have their own little, deal, little, <laughs> you know, goods and bads. But I will honestly say, I mean, that's the one thing. I've made a lot of friends. I'm very um, glad about it and everything and the experiences I've gotten. I mean, so many different TV shows, all that. I, I just, it's an amazing experience. I'm glad I got to do it. One thing I could say, the biggest thing is, is when I'm out there and I'm on some of those shows, I've reached so many families, especially with children with autism. Mm -hmm. That gets me. Because when you are a mom with autistic or mental ill child and you've watched them tortured night after night and it, it's something and you just sit there like, oh, and the doctors just want to drug them and put them in a hospital and all this stuff. I mean, it's hard. And mm -hmm. I love it that I can till this day. I get emails. I get messages. I get phone calls. And I'm more than happy to talk to all of them. And that's what I, that's what I will spend the rest of my life doing is talking to them, helping mothers, fathers, children, and stuff like that, just to help them get through it. Because really, I mean, it was just me, Jay and God, I mean, that did it. And I mean, now we have a huge community that honestly, and so many uh, support us. And, and so if many don't know what she's talking about, we're referring to like a lot of the work that we've done in the field has been uh, drawing the correlation between mental health issues and the supernatural, mm. whether that be Alzheimer's, dementia, Asperger's, autism, you know, all, all those different categories of mental health issues. Um, and, and we've done a lot of work in the field to um, show and a lot of shows that are out there um, highlighting a lot of that work that we've done and tying in, you know, the, the tie in between those things. I mean, you know, people with these uh, mental health issues that the, the veil is very thin for them. So when you see your aunt Susie talking to her, her departed husband and having full blown conversations, I've been in on investigations where I can tell you without a hundred percent, with a hundred percent accuracy that yes, she is talking to him mm. um, and your autistic son that you think is talking to some imaginary friend or you're even your child who's young, that's still childlike and has that childlike faith, you know, you know, still very open and susceptible to the paranormal. That's the kind of work um, that we've put out there um, on television and, and, and privately. I, I, I'm really, <laughs> I'm, we are, are very interested. We're doing the book thing now. So hopefully you guys will be able to finally see some books from nice. us. So that's what I'm focusing on more. So it can maybe help even people when we're not here anymore. I mean, to be honest with you, that's my biggest thing. And then plus events. I love bringing people in and being a big family. Um, that's, I mean, I, I don't like the drama. I hate the drama. You guys know that I hate mm -hmm. drama. I was like, you want drama, stay, stay away. I mean, just <laughs> let's go and have everybody. Let's all, we're all different. Let's join in, have fun together. All right, everybody. So we are back. Uh, we had to hop on a new call due to Google Meets only allowing us an hour, but Time flies when you're having a good conversation with friends. So now oh, we're, yeah. we're back after a commercial We break. are back. If, Welcome if, back. If we have a commercial, I don't even know what we're going to put in here. We'll do like a... We're going we're gonna to do like the one that I did with the, with the newscast. 
Do your sheep have haunting eyes? Do they look at you as you're going to the outhouse? <laughs> I'll do something like that. You, 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 could, you could talk to Jay about his uh, experience with a typhoon and then tornado and him on the roof with an axe. The axe on the roof. Yeah, we'll do <laughs> something like that. <laughs> but yeah, so you, last we left off, we were talking about you guys wanting to leave uh, a good, healthy impact on the world even after you go on. You know, and uh, during the break, we were talking as well. It was just like, we want to be able to document these conversations because we're not doing it for views. We're not doing it for, you know, fame or anything like that. We're doing it for healthy documentation because somebody, maybe not now, in a couple of days, weeks, months, years, generations on, may need help. And maybe something in this conversation may be able to help them. And, you, know, you better listen, kids. Listen to your parents. <laughs> this, is, this is my great grandson. You better have done your homework. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just in advance. I don't know what I did, but I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so continuing on all that stories and everything, it was, we, we mentioned this during the break as well. We, we had one of the greatest honors to be able to investigate you, you guys, with you guys a couple times over in Vulture City and everything. And it was really cool. And we caught some crazy stuff over there while we were investigating. <laughs> I remember um, I caught this orb going inside of Jay's mouth. And he left a funny... <laughs> His, text, Wild. His, his response was is the, uh, the family Yates diet plan right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was it was honestly really, really fun to investigate with you guys and just it, it, it felt natural to just bounce off each other, you know, to hear you guys' uh, side of the story on how you guys investigate and you guys got to see some of our side of how we investigate too. So I thought that was really cool. No, it was Definitely. So speaking of that, um... Mm. How would you guys describe your investigation style to someone who's brand new and someone who's never investigated before? They're very old. <laughs> <laughs> We're the OGs. We're OGs. We're old that we didn't have equipment. No, I'm just no I mean, I, I think that, like, um, I think the biggest problem in the field is we rely too heavily upon technology. And I think technology is really great, um, but there's a lot of flaws with technology. Um, and, and I always find myself, especially as I'm getting older, that I go back to more like old school methods, you know, like the mm -hmm. compasses. I want to go back to, you know, candles and, and the bells, the bells and things like that. Uh, for me, I think that the people that are watching a lot of these TV shows specifically, they want to emulate what they're seeing on TV. They want to emulate yeah. the technology and using all the equipment. And I think what we used to do as investigators back in the old days before there was YouTube streaming and all this other stuff going on is we more focused on what we were trying to do. And typically the people that were in the field before TV were people that were interested in helping families, business owners, and really trying to resolve issues on this side and the other side, right? Like and, Ed and Lorraine. Yeah, Warren. I mean, but yeah. they got publicity too, though. Yeah. They, but they, they didn't use equipment as much. Right. They had yeah. some, don't get me wrong. So, yeah. but I think that we lose sight of that um, when we have all this fancy technology and, and we, we miss the ticket, like we're just sitting down in, in a haunted location and just having those, those wonderful interactions. Because I've had some of the best experiences. Let me give you an example. Um, when unearthing, when they were coming, not unearthing, not unearthing, I'm saying you guys, uh, unprotected. So when mm -hmm. the pr producers came out, they came out and they did, uh, I did a private tour of the entire uh, Vulture City. Mm -hmm. And I had just walked inside the brothel and I went around towards the kitchen. One of the dolls, I literally saw jump up from facing forward to flipping around, face planting into the window. Like oh, I geez. saw it. And like Marie was with me <coughs> and I was yelling and I was so excited. And Marie's telling me, it's shut up. They're going to think we're crazy, you know, <laughs> but it's like, you know, and then they were interested in like, where are we going to put the cameras at? Or, you know, I'm just saying, so like moments like that of just really, we forget to live in the moment yeah. in this, this generation yeah. in general, we forget to live in the moment because we're too worried about updating our social media pl platforms. Trying to change everybody. Taking photographs, mm -hmm. taking video. You want to document things so much. Yeah. Um, and documentations, documentation's great, and the data collection is great, but I'm I'm more on on the side of 
you're trying to help this family out. You're trying to help this business owner out. Yeah, evidence helps to verify that they're not crazy, but they're really looking for answers. And sometimes we're so focused in our gear and our equipment that we lose sight of what we're really trying to do. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think, you know, like advice for like new people coming in is, you know, like, you know, like calm down, you know, and just relax, be in the moment. Stop worrying about the, the YouTube followers and who's on your stream or if you have good like Wi-Fi in the place that you're at because you're missing out on so many great opportunities for interaction, yeah. um, which is unfortunate because a lot of these teams rely heavily on, you know, funding so that they can afford the, the technology to do yeah. what they're doing. You know, yeah. so it's kind of a catch 22. And I understand that. Mm -hmm. um, so but uh, reality is and I think we're kind of coming back to a place in the supernatural and the paranormal field in general to where a lot of the OGs out there are kind of like not using any of this equipment anymore. And they're walking into these events, you know, and they're like, Oh wait, did you feel, you feel this? And then they're kind of going off that and they're building a story <coughs> of their experience. And, and sometimes I find that more valuable, that human experience, because it's so, it's, it's so cool now to get like those views on TikTok and things like that with this great catch. But I think that we're losing sight of what's important. And, that, and that's really like, you know, helping the people out by really living what they're living. Because the owners aren't running around with cameras all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that's bad. Now, like, we don't set up any more, like, huge DVR systems. Yeah. We stopped that years ago. Yeah. And then we started just putting, like, you know, handhelds out here and there and here and there. But then we got to where we were just like, okay, everything we're doing is experience-based. Where we were just filming what we were doing and yeah. uh it was easier to go over evidence that way yeah but i really wouldn't do that anymore i don't see the value um i see the value in data collection obviously um but just how i do things is just not important i mean we'll video um just to document some stuff if like a business owner like their family needs it we'll sit there and document stuff but i always tell for anybody a new investigator coming in i will honestly say Bring your equipment, bring all the fun, you know, technology, all that stuff. But when you first go in there, don't use any of it. Go in there and use yourself. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Get yourself aware of the location and the spot you're at um, before you actually start using all this equipment. Uh -huh. Because you, those equipment, sometimes you use that equipment in a different location. Well, you never know if that something from that other location is coming right with you. Yeah. I mean, so perfect story I have about this about attachments and investigative Can equipment. Can I interrupt? Can I interrupt? <laughs> this, is, this is important. So, um, but just going off what she said, though, <clears throat> that like you know, when she's talking about attachments to equipment, I, I can tell you the story that um, I used to have like probably what like fifteen cases of oh. paranormal equipment, and we would sit it in my closet. <clears throat> and I remember one day I had come home from the sheriff's office, and I was trying to like get myself to lay down. And I had just laid down in bed and like something literally like a black image, like this dark shadowy figure, like literally materialized out of my equipment, ran straight through my room. OK, and literally like just I mean, it was terrifying. I was like, oh, my God, what the hell is that? Right. So I, I, what I'm saying is, is that this stuff she, she's saying, it, it, it does sometimes kind of harbor like attachments and you have to kind of be cognizant of that. Um, and a lot of people do a lot of cleansing of their equipment, right? You know, I know a lot of teams will go out and put their stuff under a moonlit night, things like that. They have different rituals to cleaning it. We never did that. We were no. just like, our stuff was always, we were riding dirty always. So like, <laughs> it was like, it was like, okay, it's all back in the closet. There you go. Like whatever. And that was, that was part of our fallacy too earlier on where we were having the issues was because we'd never protected ourselves. And we've been very open with that in the beginning. We never used any type of protection. We never used any rituals of you know, protecting yeah. ourselves. We literally, we welcomed the attachments because through the mm -hmm. attachment, we were able to help so many people. Yeah. But the next side mm -hmm. of that is, is we, you know, it almost took us out. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. I, I actually have an example of that too, but it wasn't with the equipment. It was actually during editing of a video. Now. Oh that, yeah. Yeah. So it was actually, this happened a lot to us when we first started editing our videos and everything. And one video in particular, it was the old Gila County Jail. Now, that video, when I used to edit it, I used to stay up late at night. And I, and I was living in an apartment complex, so I couldn't have my speakers blaring, you know, like all these, like, spirit boxes all, all loud. And neighbors would get all pissed <laughs> off at 1 o'clock in the morning. 
What would be very creepy was I would be replaying a clip and, and of a, uh, trying to look out for voices through the SB7 and everything like that. And then I would hear like conversations happening. And it was like weird. Like I would stop the... I would stop the recording or the video, what I was doing, take off my headphones, and sometimes I would hear it, you know? And it was weird. Sometimes, like, the whole computer would just crash, all these different things, malfunctions with my computer, everything would just happen, and it just felt dark and weird inside of my apartment. When I, Whenever you're working with, like, I was editing, like, a really dark location that we went to, I always had to, like, whenever I would start to feel anxious or my heart would start beating so much it felt like even though we're not there at the time the energy that we captured on our cameras during the investigation bled off into the into me because i was editing it but yeah. also with that carrying that on we 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 realized that we had to be careful with when you watch certain things that you know, there's, there's a difference between a movie like a tv show and everything and something that's real when you right. watch stuff that's real or has a scary demonic message behind it, sometimes when you watch that, that energy comes out of the TV and comes out into you too. And yes. so, like, sometimes I just had to, like, just take a break and just smudge yeah. the house and just bless everything, put ash on, everything like that. I mean, so. things, would be, things would be falling while we're editing, and you're like, that shouldn't have fallen. Well, what's going on? And it's wild when you're editing. And so that's actually a perfect segue into my next question. Uh, Jay Marie, what are your guys' thoughts and opinions on the movies that are coming out and the television shows and even the, uh, the paranormal investigative shows that are on TV? What are your views and opinions on people getting sick from watching things like that or having paranormal events happen to them after watching a movie or a show? I mean, I, th I think that it's absolutely possible, right? I mean, I think that there is always a risk of just opening yourself up to any of that world, whether it be just through the TV screen, you're kind of inviting. It's like almost like an invitation, right? And if the right elements are there, it can cause problems. I mean, there's certain like, um, there's certain that I, I wouldn't necessarily, I don't often watch um, because I've had certain ripple effects from watching them. Um, there's certain movies um, that that will spark for me specifically with my near death experience. Um, there's certain scenes that will pop up like on certain movies um, that will kind of bring me back to a moment, you know, or on a case. Um, and it almost reopens that wound, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, but the possibility, I think, is always there. I, I think that you have these people that surround themselves with like these horror cult um type films i think that it does definitely it becomes taxing on a person's spirit i mean i think it does i mean all these images and that's just imagery in general right because i mean there's even been studies where people have shown these crazy images and stuff yeah. and it can stimulate different uh, emotions and those emotions can create energy and those energies can manifest spirit right mm -hmm. or so we call spirit right yeah. yeah um so i i think there is always a genuine possibility i mean there is some recent paranormal horror, horror films that we've watched where we were like wow they should not have shown this on tv right um yeah i i definitely don't like what they do and painting the demonic sometimes as humorous. I don't like them painting it as something that is always beatable. I don't. I don't really like that. Um, I mean, what are your guys' take on some of this? Uh, everything's well, a skinwalker. Won't, I, won't, <laughs> oh, like, I won't even watch horror movies. You can ask him. I mean, I'm not a horror. I mean, yeah. I love <clears throat> like we Jason just okay. And wait a Freddy second. And you just watched. The, we just watched Invitation, dude. Yeah. The new movie, okay. Invitation, the yeah. Vampire movie. I love but vampires. I love them. freaking out. I almost love that movie because, to be honest with you, when I watched that, and it really started getting very dark. Yeah. And it a part really of it really was. It's and I'm like, movie, you know what? Way. I need to leave. Because I, I do. I, I That energy of that darkness, like, it, it, it comes inside me. And it, like, and I just, and I have these horrible nightmares mm -hmm. and then i the, like the days after i just i just don't act right they plant seeds within our spirit right and then and depending on where we're at and what we're going through it can it can cause manifestation right and and that's what we have to be cognizant of and careful with and here i am saying that and you're in our room right now and if you were to see the other side of this camera it is like michael myers threw up <laughs> well, I mean, come on, guys. I mean, like, like, see, that so, doesn't bother me. It's the actual movies itself. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's, I don't know what it is. Like, I can't even watch it movies. Like, mm -hmm. I can't watch it. I, I, I know Jay loves it. But see, that's like one of those films where you have to be careful with. And I won't even say the films on air that really have created, it, I think, are huge issues. <laughs> just because I don't want to hear about it from anybody else. But yeah, there is there there is some out there that are really. Well, I don't really watch horror movies. I I have watched almost all the paranormal shows. I well, was... all the Conjuring films. We were invited when we were in Arizona to the 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 screenings because they would have us do lectures before the actual yeah. um, the pre screenings, where we would talk paranormal. We bring out haunted objects, stuff like that. Um, so we did watch pretty much every paranormal related film because of that. Um, from like. 2010 through like 2018. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we did, I mean, I've watched a lot of them, I will say, but there's some of them that I'll just like, I don't, I won't watch certain ones. I, I'm sorry. Saw movies. No, thank you. Right. I mean, that's just, I, I, sorry. I, I, I understand these people that create these movies. I guess they but call for genius. you, it, it does. No. It, it creates. Oh, I knows. think it's people really do that kind of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, Sorry. <laughs> that, that that's like that's the, all I think about is somebody really believed that, put a movie into that, thought about that. I'm like, there's really people out there. So to me, it that's why I think when people are watching these, like, oh my goodness, this can really happen. Oh my goodness, so you're sucking and really believing it. So that energy is like sitting there. So whatever energy or spirit is around you, well, they're gonna probably mess with you. Mm -hmm. So and they do mess with me a lot. It's almost so. like an invitation. No pun intended talking about that and with the tv shows like the paranormal related television shows that are out there today um i i mean i think it does i mean they're great they're 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 a great tool to um educate people that this stuff is there but at the same time it's a great tool to show that some things just they're just a little they have to remember most tv much. shows are mostly entertainment yeah. there's a lot of real life stuff in there that they are teaching um, I know almost all, everybody that's on a TV show almost, and they're all amazing people. I will say that, and I have so much mad respect for them. Um, but I will say production and network. Well, there has to be production value with anything that's out there, I so mean, it has to be it has to be scary. It, and really, they set these things up. They have the music playing. But so who's, really I mean, to be honest with you, the average person, are you really going to watch a TV show <laughs> from ghost hunters that are just sitting there ghost hunting? No. <laughs> hours and hours like, of talking into the, like, the dark. 2005 to 2010. I mean, us paranormal investigators probably would, but <laughs> the average person will not sit down and watch that. They want the entertainment. They want. Well, that's why they tie in the history now. They tie in the theatrical and dramatizations, and it makes it fun. Like the show that we did for uh, two seasons, Haunted Case Files. They did a great job. I mean, we we were the storyteller. Um, so it was first-hand accounts. We just said, don't believe what you see <laughs> yeah. on the, when yeah. they were doing the reenactment. <laughs> so sometimes, like, production will take creative responsibilities to, you know, like, make things a little bit more terrifying. But that's mm -hmm. their job to do that. But yeah. we're telling the story, then we're showing you our real evidence. So it's telling a story, but it's also making it entertaining. And that's what it's there for. Mm -hmm. I mean, really. And you have to remember all these different uh, TV shows, every one of these um, paranormal investigators are on the show. They all react and di um, investigate differently. Yeah. So people like some people say I'm a Ghost yeah. Hunter fan, or the other ones I'm a, uh, I'm a Ghost Adventures fan. It, it's because what kind of method you sort of like and experience yourself. Yeah. I mean, so like Ghost Hunters are more like a scientific approach to investigating using like technology. The Ghost Adventures is too, but they're uh, they're um, they're a little more experience driven on like what they're doing, right? Like it's like you know. It's it's more. I mean, it's more entertaining. I guess you could say in the point that they have the theatrics, they have the dramatizations uh, of what I the think. Stories Ghost were. Adventure. How the best way to explain this? Hey, I love. Ghost I love. Adventures, I love so both of them. But Ghost angry. Adventures is most entertainment. I think a lot. A lot of it is real. Don't get me wrong. I've been on some of those shows. Real. It's just and best. I mean, they are very entertaining. Ghost Hunters is a teaching. They it's really are. Of it's like more of a teaching, educational, yeah. thing. educational thing. And don't get me wrong, I think Zach throws a lot of that in there as well. But I think he does it for entertainment. He and to be honest with you, if you've met Zach, I mean that he is a, he's very real about stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, and when he's invest I always say Jay's like him in investigating. And you guys see Jay, he screams 
at yeah. things and he hollers at things and all that. And that's exactly how Zach yeah. is. I, I think like Ghost Adventure is like the team that like emotionally gets caught up in the investigation is the yeah. best way to put it, which makes yeah. that very entertaining to me at least. Mm-hmm. Now, the Ghost Hunters are ones that are more like scientifically approaching the investigation. So um, for those, there's a, there's a party for that too, you know, but. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of other trash out there too. That you know, it is what it is. I guess. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> That's like the thing with Ghost Adventures is just they they get emotionally involved in the location. You know, they yeah. they, yes. they, they they tie in through that, and then say like if you want to go to the Ghost Hunters, you know, they're more scientifically driven, so you have to toss out your own bias and your own emotions out of it to be able to catch the yeah. evidence and right. everything. So, right. I, I remember, and saying, there's something to be learned from both, right? Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Definitely. You know, because there's different practices. Because with Ghost Adventures, if you dive in too much emotionally, it can take advantage of you too. You know. Yep. And so you, and you see a lot of that on that show too, really. Yeah. So oh, yeah. First is what you see on Ghost Hunters because they do emotionally jump in head first, right? Yeah. Which is their style, like that's their style. That's what they do. And that's why I said, like all paranormal investigators, we're all different. We all investigate different. We all have different backgrounds. We all have different methods, beliefs, everything. You know the show that I'm liking right now that's out there is, uh, what is it? The Ghost Bro, what is it? Fight Club? Fight Club. Fright, Fright Club. Oh, oh Fight yeah. Club, yep. yep. Where they show like the clips and stuff like that. And they kind of talk about it. It's, it's entertaining. They're joking around about it. It would just remind me of like, you know, us sitting in a just room sitting watching in a videos. Room talking with your friends. And just kind of going, holy crap, look at that. And then making fun <laughs> of like the whole situation. Like that's a cool show to me. Yeah, it's different. I, I, I love doing I, something different. Yeah, I love their honest reactions to it, you know, and, <laughs> yeah. and 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 that's what really makes it unique about them. And kind of going back to the the whole movies thing and everything about it having some dark attachments to it. I believe the last movie I saw that made me feel some type of way after watching it was the most recent Conjuring movie. Now, yep. I know a lot of it was theatrics and added on later. But there were some underlying images and underlying tones throughout the movie that were there, are actually like teachings too. Yeah, it's just like there are some techniques that the dark ways use in that movie, and just like how Marie said, it's scary because that's real. You yep. know, e- even yeah. even though like it didn't happen at that investigation or like during the uh, the case and everything. The filming, yeah. Yeah, or during the actual live case, the filming of it and then the tone and then some of the stuff that actually happens is real. And, you know, if you've dealt with the dark ways that way, you've gone against, like, darker entities like that, you know they can do stuff like that. And then to a normal person who hasn't gone through that stuff, watching that movie, you're like, oh, that's cool. And then me sitting there like, holy shit, how'd they know about that, you know? (laughs) Yep. You know, honestly, like the Conjuring films for Marie and I, like uh, we kind of get emotional in, in every one of the films that I think yeah. that we've actually watched um, for the first. Honestly, the I will say, Lori, a lot of relating then, yeah. to where you're yeah. like, oh man, like the, the scene where um, Lorraine is like running and uh, Ed's trying to chase her, and then she ends up like right at the edge of a cliff. It's like yeah. I've been through that shit with Marie, so mm-hmm. I felt that where I was like, oh wow. Like, so when I'm watching and everyone's just like, oh, that's scary, I got tears in my eyes because it just reminded me of that one time or that third time or that fifth time when Marie did something similar to that where it's like, oh, yep. my God, dude. Like, But, yeah, they do a really great job at capturing that I and, love, and making it entertaining. Well, really. I like it. And don't get me wrong. It's Yeah, it is TV. It's a movie. So, you know, a lot of things have been added, not true, whatever, all that. I mean, yeah. But I will say I love – hearing, watching, reading everything about Ed and Lorraine. To be honest with you, those two right there, to me, this is my belief, is the the OGs. I mean, I have Mm -hmm. the uh, most mad respect for those two. um, And I couldn't even imagine. And I'm so glad that I'm so close with John. And uh, I mean, he's family to us. You guys, I'm glad you guys got to meet him. I mean, it's just it went, that's the thing I like. I mean, it's just learning and hearing about different stories, different methods. It was crazy, dude. I remember, like, when I first got to sit down with John many years ago, and, like, we were sitting there, we were eating lunch together or something, and I got so fucking emotional, dude. 
And I was like, you don't understand, John. Like, your family, you, like, what you've done. And, and he's like, Jay, I already know where you're going with this, buddy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, there's no need to talk about it. Like, he just really just, like, it's nonchalant, really cool about it. Um, but, like, uh, there, there is, there's a lot of great people out there, man, you know, and uh, it's cool to kind of be a part of this field. And it's really weird for us, like, when we watch something like, what is it, Fright Club, right? Yeah, we do. And, and we're sitting everybody. here and we're like, oh, shit, like, oh, there's so-and-so. And, oh, wow, I didn't know he was on this show. And, and it's just really weird to, like, know the people behind that. And it's almost like a really good, like, feeling where you're like, wow, like, you know, and, and like, I know that investigator. That's so cool. Like, we were just watching the other day. And, uh, um, Patty, it? yeah, we went up to Washington. To investigate and do, uh, what is it? The, I can't even say the name of the place. It's, it's a museum. It's a of, badass yeah. uh, train stop. It's completely haunted. Super haunted. haunted. Super mm-hmm. haunted. And, and she got it finally on Fright Club. Yeah, really? and I, I was, like, I was yes. just so good to see it on there. And it really is very haunted. But we got to go up there for one of the events and... It was good to see something like that. And there was a couple other things on there where it's just like, oh, my goodness, we know that. So I love sitting back now and just watching. It's I, cool, man. Yeah. It's watching, cool. fa- you know, friends I call family now. Seeing out there Getting doing Getting opportunities stuff. to share yeah. their stories like we did I on mean, TV, it's just, cool, man. It's, it's wonderful. I, I think it can draw a lot of things. Just like using equipment, TV, you got to remember it's technology. It's electrical. All that kind of stuff draws all that kind of energy into you. So when you're watching it, you're bringing your emotions to it. Yeah, stuff There's can't come out. There's certain stuff that Marie won't even let me watch. She'll be like, all right, turn it off now. Like, you're done. You're done. Because she sees me going there. Yeah. And, like, reliving something or whatever. And it's it's like almost like PTSD related. It's kind of weird. And you. certain yeah. things, <laughs> if I'm, it's uh, like a couple hours before I'm going to bed, Jay can't watch certain things. Yeah, she'll be like, turn that off. Like, turn Ghost off. Adventures cannot be on my TV Two hours before I go to bed. Nope. <laughs> I will not go to bed with Ghost Adventures. Sorry. It implants I those memories. I would go to bed with, I mean, with Ghost Hunters being on the TV. But I mean, and I have, like, they're all my friends. I mean, I love them all. But like I said, they're, it's, it's the way, like, Ghost Adventures does their show. It, it's energetic. And it's, you know, it's like, it's drawing everybody in it. And you're like, and I think it comes out. Yeah, two people. Absolutely, I do. I do. And I have nightmares, things. and I, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> they have that endorphin driving uh, kind of down to a science. It's, it's very interesting. <laughs> they're, yeah, their 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 color science, their imagery, what they show, the audio, the music, everything is just like it's perfect. You it know, yeah. to 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 bring out that 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 fear chemical or that emotion chemical it, it, that's something that we're starting to notice is how different shows how different movies we're looking beyond kind of like beyond their face value it's like how is it that they're creating this piece of art how is it that they're creating this particular emotion this environment to where it draws people in and i guess that kind of goes into into movie making that goes into filmmaking and then you take that and you separate that into, okay, how do ghosts do it? I know there's certain things like how we believe in the phantoms that draw fear out of people in real life. They'll be there and they'll draw fear and they'll draw kind of that chemical um, reactions within your body. How do they do that? And what has kind of film kind of done with that? And kind of how can the worlds combine to where it, it makes great, not only television, but also a realistic learning experience. Right, right, absolutely. You just made me think about it. Honestly, back in the day, I was able to watch horror movies. But you have to remember when, like, all those horror movies in the 80s were made, technology wasn't actually built very good. It was just a movie. If you watch some of them, if you replayed it the exact way we watched it in the 80s, you're going to look at it like, this looks like shit. I mean, that's what you're going to look at it. Like, oh, crap. Now, these days, I'm sorry, how much technology... And energy goes into all these movies and shows and all that. Why? Do, yeah, it does. It's literally a science, like they yeah. were saying, behind it to it's make just, it what it is. But there's nothing like watching like the original Halloween. Come on, man, that's better. Right, but it's not right. scary though. But, but I mean, it's, to not, me, it's that's not scary. Said. But yeah, but I mean. It's, but back in the day, I was able to watch all those. I could probably, if you put an old VHS tape in of Halloween, I would probably be able to watch it and won't be as so scared. But you put it on a TV that has how much freaking depth where it looks like it's 
right there in front of you, it makes it scarier. Yeah. It really does. And that, that, so, that, that, I mean, yeah. sorry, my cat. <laughs> my cat's coming in. What, what, what's the name of your cat? Gizmo. Gizmo. Gizmo, like the little gremlin? She's a gremlin, dude. She's a gremlin. <laughs> and she has to be padded. See, everybody, it's not alive. She has to be padded like a baby on my shoulder. <laughs> It's just cute. cute. Well, that, that that's one thing that my mom used to always tell me is like, you got to imagine back in the day, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't no. have all these things. Hey, so You're getting hair everywhere. <laughs> so like, so like, imagine if somebody's like trying to like murder you and everything, you don't have communicate, instant communication with the police or anything like that back in the day. That's a creepy thing. Yeah, that is. I remember Brandon, when he was hanging out with his friends, I was like, oh, why don't you go? You know, see if your friend's available. He'll just send him a text or something. I'm like, you know what I used to have to do? Get out my bike, go ride my bike on the way to their house. Hey, do you want to go hang out? No, I can't tonight. Okay, go ride back home. You know, that's <laughs> I how I got to go. <laughs> that tells you my age. I mean, but like, seriously, that's how we got to, you know, talk to our friends and stuff. We didn't have cell phones. I mean, to be honest with you, when I grew up, <laughs> we had a, one of those big TVs with rabbit ears. <laughs> and you had to get up and turn it and switch it. Um, it just... I remember when my mom got cable for the first time, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh!" And we had a remote control, and I was just like, thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're out there playing with your friends, and you know when the street lights turn on, you got to get your ass home. Yeah, <laughs> we, my mom and I were just talking about that. Like I knew what time I was supposed to come home. As soon as those, you know, lights come on. I better get home because if all of them come on, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> that, that's what's like really awesome about all that. And, you know, it, it, it's really that's one of my goals is to become like a filmmaker like that, to be able to tell, you know, some of the awesome traditional native stories like that. You know, all of our like a lot of our creation stories we have about these spirits fighting, you know, monsters a long time ago, you know, the certain you know, how heroes used to go out and, you know, protect the villages and how these medicine men used to go really do really great deeds, you know, make movies like that, you know, to yeah. be able to visually be cool. translate it into everybody else, you know, and that's, that's one of my goals. And that's why, like, I've been studying how to do all these things. And just, I'm, I'm a self-taught editor, I'm a self-taught, you know, everything, you know, with all this stuff. And it's just like, you, you, you learn by trial and error. You know, and it's just as you grow throughout the years, you know, you just continue to you get feedback from everybody. Then you compare and contrast with everybody else and you just like you, you grow that way. So, yeah, just really studying that. And then lo and behold, you know, some dark energy is coming out of my stuff while I'm trying to do that at the same time, you know. But, I will honestly say something, Nicholas. I remember when we first met you, you were very quiet. He was. And, and David talked all the time. And it was just, you talked, but not as much. Mm -hmm. And now seeing you now, I'm so impressed. There, you have we have, lot, we have a lot more confidence. Yes. Too. That's great. And it's, it's good to see. see. I have been smiling probably through this whole thing. A lot of it had to do with you, Nicholas, because I'm so happy to see that you just came out of your shell 100%. Because it knew it was in there. Yeah. I mean, even your brother knew yeah, yeah, it. David's sitting there like, yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> He's grown a lot. It's man. Good, so. It's awesome, yep. Oh, yeah. It that, is. It's so wonderful seeing them like that. Like, you're going to get there one day where you're doing your filming. You're going to make your movies because I see it in you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do. I see it in both of you. You guys will but get But you guys won't stop at anything less, though. No. That's the thing about you guys. Nope. <laughs> and, and that's the thing is, like, we want to be able to set the tempo for future generations to go forward and continue more so than what go further and beyond than we, than we ever did, you know? Right. And you bringing that up, Marie... I have to thank you guys, too, for the Vulture City Tours. And kind of going back to what Jay said about, like, actually experiencing investigating. Actually, without put, with putting the equipment down and everything like that. I think when I started doing the tours, I was able to actually just sit down and interact with the spirits on these tours. And just really get to know them instead of trying to drive for a narrative or just trying to drive for evidence or anything. Just sit there and communicate. I will always remember oh my one of my I think it was like last month or two months ago, I went on a tour and we were in the roost. I was saying, okay, you know, this is the last part of the tour, last part we're gonna do like a little investigation here. Do you have any final messages for our uh, our guests here? 
And then a, a little girl's voice came through the box. This first time ever, she's like, "Nope, that's all. Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> I was just was like, awesome. "I was like, my heart. Oh my god, thank you." <laughs> you know, it was it was beautiful. You know, to to hear that and you know all the experiences that Vulture City has and everything. And you know, speaking of Vulture City, we have a really really great event coming up. You guys want to go ahead and tell them about that? Yeah, uh, Vulture City Paracon um, 3. Um, so that's coming October 7th, 8th, and 9th. Um, that's, uh, it starts out on the 7th for the daytime um, ghost uh, hunt and tour, yep. which transitions into a meet and greet um, that, uh, uh, with all of our uh, speakers, including you guys, um, will be out there. You'll be able to chat with, talk with, hang out with. Um, and uh, a full weekend of vendors and speakers and patty's doing galleries seance and on saturday night we're doing um the public ghost hunt so you're able to investigate with um everyone that's on our uh lineup um so we're really excited about it um we've uh, now vulture has brought over the the new building right so we have the the generator building so that's a new place that people that haven't been able to experience that yet will be able to do that um, but uh, yeah, we're super stoked about it. That's uh, Vulture City Paracon, the seventh through the ninth, at VultureCityParacon.com. Yep. Yes. And we are over at sold out on the VIP tickets. So um, if you are interested in doing like any of the full VIP thing, I would get the ticket sooner than later because it is starting to sell. Um, so uh, it's gonna be good. I will say. Historically, they don't. They they'll end up selling out by like the the week of. Like completely. So don't wait until like, oh, I'm going to get last minute, last minute, last minute, because they could be gone because there's only a limited amount of VIPs that we do. General admission, guys, if you guys want to come out to check it out, like literally $20 at the door, you get to explore the entire town, um, talk with our lineup that's out there um, and uh, enjoy the speakers throughout the day. Um, so and we have bucks, amazing like, speakers. And that's what we try to do every year for these events. I just try to bring, I mean, if everybody can tell, we try to bring newer people in i would love to bring so many of the people back but we only have limited time of speakers so there's certain people we can bring in some but we do have our normal ones like you guys Ooh. you guys are like oh. a permanent <laughs> like vulture so it's like you guys are coming out and i know people love you you're one of the guests they're always talking about and i love it when i actually uh promote you guys you have people oh, yeah yeah so, <laughs> So, I mean, that's, I mean, you guys did an amazing thing, and that's what we tried to do on uh, Meet and Greet last year. You guys did what you guys did. Oh, my goodness. People still talk about it to this day. Um, <laughs> this time, we're actually doing table tipping. Um, if you've never, t- I've never experienced doing table tipping in front of me. <clears throat> so, it's going to be, I thought, it'd be right there in front of everybody to sit there and watch her try to table tip, Ooh. you know? And so, so, I thought, okay, let's do this. It's entertaining i mean something i've never done i mean i've actually never even been in a seance yeah we did oh yeah then we i did one time i did that's for a funny Virginia story dude. like i was holding john zappas's hand for an hour that's true i forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's a highlight right there that's a highlight yeah, right there uh, and it was kind of a drawn out seance wasn't it oh that was in tahoe yeah, okay. but we see, didn't have I, to say that i sorry. was trying to joke about it yeah well, I, don't care. That? I don't i that's who i am oh, okay but yeah everybody so if you guys uh haven't yet go out and get your tickets there's gonna be a lot of great people you know you just come interact with us it's a family reunion pretty much when you go out there you know it's it's it's, it's a lot of fun you get to meet all of us you get to even do like an overnight ghost hunt with us too you know get to go to the buildings and everything you want to experience you know some of these big name people out here see their styles just like how we're expressing and then see the, how they investigate it's it's really awesome especially in vulture city vulture city like i i always say my tours and just like how i think jay told me to this place is like spiritual disneyland you know yep. <laughs> it, it, every all types of spirits come here from all different times time frames and everything all different races so it's it's always a lot of fun to go out there so brother did you have any other questions that you would like to ask for right now, no, but I do know that this is not going to be the last time that we're going to have Jay Marie on here. We're going to <laughs> definitely have them on again, ask a little bit more questions because they have an amazing just lineup <laughs> of stories, lessons, um, some teachings and tales that we are still learning each and every day. 
these are these these two are like our mentors. They got us uh, helped us into the paranormal field. They introduced us to the paranormal community, and they're beloved family to us. So we look forward to having them on again, and we hope you learned a lot from this podcast. Uh, Jay Marie, Keho, thank you so much for taking the time to thank speak with guys. us, and uh, we look forward to maybe when we're up there in age and we can uh, force our kids to watch this and be like, hey, <laughs> you better learn something. This is a lot of teachings right here, you know? Let everybody, I'm going to let everybody know, everything you just learned right now is just a little tiny, tiny, tiny piece of knowledge, <laughs> you know, of everything. You know, we, we, we sat with these two up until three or four o'clock in the morning by the campfire just talking about everything. You know? <laughs> so, you know, thank you everybody so much for listening. Jay Marie Eights. Thank you again. I love you guys so much. And, and until next time, everybody. You guys too. We love you guys. You guys are family 100%. <laughs> Take yeah, care, everybody. Thank you.